Thanks, baby. Having one of these is normally a weekend endeavor, if and when I do. Um, so, wow, that was a struggle. <clears throat> I wanted to, uh, whether it's called a vlog or just talking, I wanted to shed some light on some things or my opinion, not shed some light. I want to, I want to give my opinion, voice my opinion, which I'm very well to do <laughs> as people know that know me well enough. Um, whether they've been longtime Facebook friends with my old account or even some of the shortly newfound friends with this new account. And by the way, if nobody read my bio on James Ingstrom, my first name is Daniel. Um, I'm using James because it's my middle name and my original account, my um, main account is suspended for the third time. And I quoted what the U.S. Constitution says to do with people that are found guilty of treason, and we won't get into any more of that in this video. And this ain't bad. An official Cuban reject. And uh, cherry Kool-Aid with stevia sweetener. And uh, some whiskey. So since I became a ham radio operator, KE7UUM, 2008, in the late, I guess it wasn't quite summer yet, was it? I don't know, it doesn't matter. But in the middle of 2018, um, no, sorry, 2008, 2008, um, I became a ham and I thought it was way cool I still do but there are some very irritating things that I'm learning which is that more often than not other ham operators especially in my area of Salem Oregon they think that all of the radio service is garbage and I know this and I say this because I have spoken to a lot. I was a member of a local club. And um, I'm not no more. Probably will never become a member of that specific club at least. Again. I'm thinking, I don't want to get too far off, but my main focus is radio service. Um, I was a part of um, ARES, Amateur Radio Emergency Services, for a while here in Marion County. And there were things that I wasn't able to do um, because I'm only a technician. I don't have my general class license yet. So I normally had to team up with others. And every time I would make a suggestion and talk about 10 meters, I was always shut down. Until another local ham, a good friend of mine, and I went out and played some on 10 meters. And did what they said couldn't be done. So first off, 10 meters, I'm very fond of. It's not dead. People need to get on it. Two, um, when... I think I hear a critter in the shed over here. <laughs> um, two, I've already said, um, is that no radio service is completely worthless. Even FRS. You know, FRS is great for... Um, FRS is great for... You know, like if you're maybe on a hike and your kids are, you know, maybe a couple hundred feet. Not like little two or three year old kids, but younger kids, um, maybe preteens or whatever, and they're a few hundred feet in front of you, you know, depending on how you are with your kids and how close you want them when you're hiking. FRS would be great service for that. Lots of the FRS radios, they um, have some privacy tones, so 
Not that they are private completely, but you're not going to be as easy to be found, less likely to get interrupted. Especially if you use a digital tone, if those radios that you have do a digital tone. GMRS, you're technically, you're, it's license required. Um, I would say probably 90%, and these are just my numbers. I don't know how to, where to really go to tell you to figure them out. But 90% of them are probably, the people that have the bubble pack radios probably are not licensed. Um, for people that are using GMRS repeaters, and yes, there are GMRS repeaters, for people that are using those, they're probably um, most likely licensed. Otherwise, the repeater owners probably won't let you talk on them. Or club repeaters, if a, there's a GMRS club that has one. This is a really good find. Um, no, because if I tell you where I got it, it's close enough to my home, and I'm not going to. <laughs> As it is, I probably already give too much information out when I'm driving and I don't shut my camera off close enough before I get home and I've taken enough pictures. Anyways, um, the biggest thing I want to touch on is that I was in a conversation on a ham radio page on Facebook and somebody was asking about, is GMRS worth it? And a, like five. And I quit looking at it after that. And I had to shut off getting notifications for the comments because it was driving me nuts. But about five people said no, that never work as good and never get out as good as ham radio. Okay, well let me say this: um, if you get a, a uh, if you get a legal FCC type accepted GMRS radio, it's putting out forty watts, which is basically most of the UHF ham radio has put out 40 watts and I have tested this with a GMRS radio and with another friend that had a GMRS license at least at the time I don't know about now and they had a ham license and I don't know what his setup was for um, GMRS or any of that but I know that when I used the same coax the same antenna just switch radios from my ham radio on a simplex UHF frequency to GMRS on a simplex frequency, I, it was like 95% the same. Um, <clears throat> plain and simple. Um, so I'm not talking about these cheap bubble pack radios. I'm talking about an actual radio. Um, I think Midland still makes them. Actually, I think most people, Dog, Bofang, and BTEC, I shouldn't say most people, a lot of people do. But I think BTEC makes an FCC certified GMRS radio. I know there's a couple of them. Um, GMRS Simplex, it's, that's great. Now I know there's a, there's a few hams, I know of them, that use their, that have the Mars cap and they use their ham radio. I'm not saying to do that, <laughs> but it can be done. Legally, there's, it's a different story. Um, so, and there's apparently, and I just found this out in the last six months, that there's quite a few, well, there's a handful of GMRS repeaters um, between Eugene and the Portland area here in Salem. Um, the other thing, is, I'm actually looking at getting a couple, is MERS radio. Um, MERS, you're allowed um, two watts, it's limited to two watts from the radio, but this was license free. It's VHS spectrum, two watts out the back of the radio, and you can put an antenna you want, any type of antenna. Um, you know, I'm actually hoping that by next spring and next summer, I can build like a six element Yagi or some type of, um, you know, four to six element beam for VHF for the MERS frequencies. Um, Revis or Retvis, I'm, I know I'm just, you know, messing up that name tremendously, and I apologize. But um, a buddy of mine was just showing they've got a handheld. It's five, they're channelized, by the way, if you don't know, MERS. Let me back up real quick. FRS radios, Family Radio Service, GMRS, General Mobile Radio Service. 
um, FRS is the family radio service, not GMRS. Like a lot of hams, like a lot of people will say, well, GMRS was just for families to communicate, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's not com entirely true, but let them have their say, right? Also, <clears throat> and then MERS, um, multi-user radio service. They used to be the yellow, blue, and red or something dot radio service. Um, and <clears throat> those actually do, they're VHF. They actually do very well. Um, in fact, I've, um, I've used a couple of my um, VHF ham antennas. Didn't even have to do on a couple of them any tuning to get them to match up on the uh, frequencies. Which is, there's two in the 152. Um, no, I think there's three in the 152 area. Um, there's 152, um, 820, 152, 880, 152294, 154, um, 57, 154, 600. I believe that's the ones. Some of those are wideband, some of those are um, narrowband. Um, what else? So, you know, there's radios out there. And um, the MERS is license-free. And these radios, sorry, I jumped around there a little bit. Get me back on track here. Those radios are only putting, um, are only costing, um, I think I found them on eBay for like $18. Before I upload this video, I will um, try to go back and find it. And um, I'll put a link or... Um, maybe screenshot of it, the website, so you can go back. I found them on eBay. Um, sorry, looking up at a plain squirrel. So, and let's see, what started it all? What started the radio service in my life? Let's go way back. Probably to as far back as I can remember. There has never been a time in my life as a young child that I can't go back in time and remember my dad having a police um, receive radio. Um, used to call them police monitors because you could monitor the police band, fire, weather, uh, frequencies, um, aircraft, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and um, um, police scanners. There hasn't been a time in my life where I don't remember him having a CB in the car. Um, and even in the travel trailers that my grandma had, he would put one in and he had one in her car had a base station, and I am, have always been around 11, I, I was always around 11 meters when I was a kid. My very first 11 meter radio was given to me at a CB break here in Kaiser, Oregon, when they were doing them, when Magma was doing the breaks out at, I think he was the one that was actually started or putting them on, out in um, Kaiser at JC's Pizzeria off of River Road. Um, it was a Krako emergency radio where you come in a plastic box and you put it up on and uh, had a magnet antenna that you put on the roof of a car or wherever. That was my very first CB. And then, I really don't know from there what was next, but I know from somewhere, and I got that probably like when I was 10 to 13. Um, I also remember getting one year, and I don't remember what happened to it, um, a, um, a hat that said Blue Thunder on it. And um, I had a t-shirt that said Blue Thunder on it too. Um, those days I was running Channel 14 because it said Blue Thunder Channel 14 on them. Um, at some point in time, 13, 14 or 15 years old, I, I had a little mobile um, CB radio. Sideband. I believe it was a PC-122. It was like the, the lowest of the line. A bare minimal um, AM, FM, excuse me, <laughs> AM sideband, um, automatic noise limiter or, and or noise blanker switch. That was about it. And it had um, volume squelch and like an RF gain or something. And I mounted that to the handlebars of my bicycle. I had a 102 inch whip on, on the back, on the opposite side as a derailleur, and a 12 volt motorcycle battery that was mounted underneath the seat. 
I rode my bike, like I rode a bicycle every day pretty much of my life from that point on between work and some of the schools that going to and across town. Um, back then it was different. I'd ride from the um, north end of Kaiser to the south end of Salem to go to work, back to school. Um, so, and then on, even as a young adult and getting married at the age of 19, um, I had a base station, had radios in my cars, a way of communicating. I always thought about becoming a handman, but never wanted to deal with the Morse code. Um, so that's why I never pursued him. When I got divorced from my first wife in the early 2000s, I had learned that Morris Code hadn't been a requirement for a while. So I went down to take the test, never had any time to study or any of that because I found out about the test two days beforehand. And I, uh, I said to heck with it and I just went and tried. And the guy told me that I only missed getting it by one point and that was in 2004. Man, this is one of the best, best cigars I've ever had for the price. I know. Some of you are going to be like, he has asthma and he's smoking. Sometimes I have a cigar. But, so, from there. And then in 2008, when I got my hand license, and I had a bunch of 11 meter stuff that was modified and, you know, the contraband. The illegal radios. <clears throat> I hope my voice is coming through okay because I don't have a headset on. I'm not using my Bluetooth. So hopefully you can all hear me okay, because if I'm not heard, I probably won't post this, and that's going to be frustrating, because I don't know how much, how many minutes I'm up to yet of just sitting here talking. But I've always had a love for radios. I was a tow truck driver for many years, and I um, had a radio in the truck. Sometimes I was allowed to put CBs in my trucks. Um, but after I got married to Sarah, Ryan's mom, and I am... Um, Got my hand license the same year my son was born, in 2008. I took and I am, um, I kind of let go of 11 meters. I had one in my Suburban for a while because I went up in the mountains. Um, I've had access to one most of the time to plug into a cigarette lighter and a small mag mount because when you're going up in the hills, the last thing you want to do, even if you have a 5,000 pound vehicle, the last thing you want to do is meet a fully loaded log truck coming down a hill. Um, uh, I've um, had to go do recovery work up in hills because um, a car went off the road. So they make turnouts in most of the places. And if you're listening to the right channel, a log truck will normally give his location. And yeah, maybe you have to pull over for five or ten minutes, but at least you uh, you know have your life and your vehicle intact. So I've always felt 11 meters was important. Um, and honestly, in a true emergency. I think that um, there's going to be a lot of people using GMRS, a lot more going to grab a radio and start using it, because at least in Salem, there's going to be a lot of repeaters that are going to shut down. For goodness sakes, there's one repeater here in Salem that the owner, if if the weather gets cold enough to, there's a chance of snow, this repeater owner gets on there and doesn't let anybody talk unless they talk about the weather on the, you know, a road report. And that's all it is, all day long. Um, it's It's very annoying. I am. Um, I understand the need for um, keep a channel clear for an emergency, but here in Salem, in this area, that, that just is a little ridiculous to me. So I just kind of stay away from that stuff. Um, I am um, <clears throat> lost my train of thought. Sorry about that. CB is license free. And just in a stock radio, now, there's a lot more noise on pretty much any band than there was 20, 30 years ago. But on a stock radio, unmodified, untouched, just from the factory, um, you know, doing 12 watts peak on sideband and doing like um, 4 watts on AM, which is what the legal limit is for 11 meters. <clears throat> There was no problem um, to talk from my house in East Salem, the one my grandma bought and my dad lives in and I live in now. There's no there's no problem talking on um, AM to even um, another base station radio 
um, over in Dallas. Hang on one second. Sorry. Um, so, 11 meters can and still will be very useful um, if there's a true emergency. Um, probably most ham repeaters in a true emergency are probably going to take and take and you know tell people not to use it unless it's a life-threatening thing. You know, I'm talking about if poo hits the fan type of scenario here. Um, I can see a lot of the repeaters, you know, going and only being used for emergency traffic. Um, and that's fine in that situation, I think, to some degree. But um, what about local, you know, if phone lines are down, house phones, cell phone lines, most people, a lot of people don't have home phone lines anymore and cell phones and cell towers go. Radio is still going to work. And it doesn't matter what two-way radio service you're using. If it wasn't hit by an um, electric magnetic um, pulse, or you have radios and boxes that you're saving for, you know, that situation, um, then it's going to, um, they're going to work. And verdict's still out where some electronics in some cases still may work, um, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, <clears throat> if the cell towers go out are the biggest thing, radio's still going to work. So, I don't really want to take up much more time. I want to encourage everybody to um, to start um, to uh, to get a two-way radio of some sort. You know, if you need a license for it, make sure you get a license. I'm not advocating to operate illegally. I'm not advocating for it. And and, and just because maybe there might be some things I may do that are not accepted from the FCC. I'm not advocating for others to do it. But what I am encouraging people to do, get a radio. Get started in radio if you never have. There's, um, they're going to be very, it's going to be a very useful tool to have. Um, if for no other reason than if you have family across town to, um, to check on it, to check in on them, um, to know how they're doing. Um, I don't, I can't believe that out of all the frequencies that are legally available to use in some way, shape, or form, that there isn't going to be some way to communicate with your family. You know, I'm not talking about holding on a conversation with um, Brother Jim Bob down the road for an hour and a half, but I'm like talking about, you know, calling in and saying, hey, how you doing? Do you need food, water? Um, are you guys snowed in? Um, are you, you know, do you have water because it's 120 degrees outside? which I think Salem hit the record, what, this summer with 119 or 117? I don't remember, but the thing is, is talk to somebody about it. I bet you, if you don't, I bet you like one or two people that know, that you know, probably know somebody that is into some type of radio service. And um, talk to them about it. Send me a message. Send me a message. Get a hold of me. Let's let's try to talk. Um, you know, um, maybe somehow, shape or form, and let's let's try to see what would best suit you for radio. Um, you know, maybe maybe you just want to keep track of your kids and where they're at outside. You know, a couple blocks down the road. Well, FRS radio would probably work great for that. Radios, one of my son's bowfangs, right here. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. Maybe he plans on leaving that outside all night long. <laughs> Who knows? So I think I've about exhausted it. Uh, so if I gone over everything, um, my um, CB handle I've already mentioned it is Blue Thunder. I've been Blue Thunder since 1982 or 83. 82, 83, somewhere in there. Um, my, um, I normally go by um, 2169 on sideband, that on, on 11 meters. Um, 
My GMRS call sign is Whiskey Romeo Oscar Golf, W-R-O-G, 651. So, there's some options. Um, hey, thank you guys for listening. For those that stuck with you and me, let me see. How long did I end up making this? Holy Moses, 25 minutes. Wow. Hey, God bless and have a wonderful evening. Well, by the time you watch this, it's probably going to be morning.